another live Excel Experts Challenge. And we have Helen Wall here from Houston, Texas. And Helen is a fellow LinkedIn learning instructor and she has her own consulting company. And Helen is kind of scary. When you look at the things she teaches, Excel, Python, Power BI, DAX, R, AWS, dashboards, machine learning, data reduction, time series modeling. That's like Denzel showing up as the enforcer and giving you choices. <laughs> you can keep doing things the wrong way or you can change your way and do the things the right way. It's a scary moment for you. <laughs> but here we are. Helen, hello, and thank you for showing up to take one of these live challenges. Well, I'm glad to be here. Okay. And I have not seen the file, so we'll see. All right, we'll see. So what has you up for this? Um, well, I think that you framed it well. You said, well, there's not, you know, that you're curious about how pe the way people do things and, um, you know, starting from something that's not ideal and the thought process that goes into it. Because one of the things I think that we've encountered as LinkedIn instructors is that we we'll put everything together so we know what the outcome is. And then if, if it's wrong, we'll start in the wrong place. Place. So you've kind of intentionally taken the wrong steps. And a lot of times there is, you know, a lot of times there are, this occurs a lot is where you try something and it doesn't necessarily work the first time. Mm -hmm. And the approach isn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily work. And so then you have to try something else, but it's not set, um, you know, when you plan out a course or teach it, record it, you've already planned for it to go wrong. And that's not the case with um, that we see with examples like this. <laughs> and with a lot of real world stuff is that you don't necessarily, you can try something, you don't know if, know if it will work. So there might be multiple attempts to get something there. It's not premeditated or pre thought out. It's definitely part of the process. Right, exactly. And process, that's what we want to show. That's why I started this series is because and we show clean examples or as Helen is saying, we might build in a mistake, but we already know the mistake is coming so that we can fix it in front of you. But what is it like? Really? You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it might take hours or even all kinds of side research in order to figure something out. And then boom, here we are with a clean one hour course or a clean seven minute tutorial. But what's it really mm -hmm. like? You teach so much. You know so much. What is your background? Or who are you to where, like, I do Excel and Power Query. That's it. But you have this whole cornucopia of skills and knowledge. Are you from <laughs> Earth? That's one question. Well, I think some of it is a combination of the things that I the things that I find interesting, the things that I've had to learn. Um, mm -hmm. So, for example, that was how I kind of that was how I initially ended up learning a lot of DAX was because I had to learn it in order to do a project, and then you know a lot of a lot of it's a combination of things that I enjoy or I find interesting, and then you know this your demand for them and there's a use for them. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, self, exp self exploration and we both like tinkering, th tinkering things and learning new things, but you know, we go in and we need to do something. Um, you know, it's more like, okay, I need to learn this because, you know, I need to learn X because this is what, you know, the, the company or the client is requiring in order to do Y, right. That there's, there's a much more of a relationship between, what needs to be done in the skill and the skills themselves are a way to get that done. And there's not one right way to do things, you know? So um, the three main languages of uh, data science are, are SQL, R and Python. 
And there are people that know all, all of them. And I know all of them, but you don't necessarily have to, um, you know, that that's a, a generic statement. It's more along the lines of what do people want to do for a project and what, what exactly is, you know, what, what are they building? So a mix of, of needs in the marketplace mm -hmm. and your own curiosity and interest. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So let's move on to the challenge. These challenges are not to trip up the guest. There's this isn't a contest. It's truly to show the process and have Helen talk us through what she sees, what she's thinking, what she anticipates, any changes of mind, changes in the direction, revising of strategies. Go ahead, Helen, and share your screen and open the file. All right, there we go. Okay. Now start talking to us. Let us know everything that's going through your mind. Okay, so when I get a file like this, the first thing I look at is how big it is. And um, we've got a pretty... Um, We've got essentially the days of the week and then three shifts. Um, so right now I'm looking at four columns of data. And I also like to check that there are no hidden sheets and um, that there, I'll go into the data view and I'll also look at the queries and connections um, to see where it's coming from. This is kind of my general um, tour of Excel when I go, when I look at a file for the first time. And um, unfortunately, this looks like it might take a while. So, or look at this actually. So, no, so we don't have um, any existing queries loaded from Power Query. We don't have any connections like analysis services database. I, you know, I can say, okay, so I know what I, what I see right here is what I'm going to be working with. So, then I'm going to go look at the question. Okay, so the questions are here. So how many distinct people, um, how many hours scheduled for Mars? Um, we've got the same for Levi, total calculated overtime pay, and then the regular pay. So what my approach here would be is to first get the data into a format um, that I want to see. And then what I'll likely do is put that in a pivot table. So that's my first approach is because I know that when I can get into a pivot table that I've organized the tabular data in a form that is going to be usable for other calculations. So why do you say pivot table and not just uh, just you you already seeing several steps ahead. Why a pivot table and not start thinking about dynamic arrays or what kind of grid or uh well I want to get into that format. That's the idea is that this seems like a question that I would try to answer from looking at a table. And so I look at a summary table to see if I can get these numbers. And so my approach is trying to figure out how to get this data into a table it's going to be useful okay. so and i also have the other details on here so each day is divided essentially into three shifts and they're each eight hours and the pay is 46 an hour and if it's overtime then they're going to be paid 1.5 the hourly rate i'm going to look at and I'm going to say that we've got the week starts on a Monday and it ends on a, on a Sunday. So within this week, how many, how can we get the, who's working on each shift? And then what's the hours that they're, what are the hours that we're looking at them for? So what I would do here is one thing I notice is that some of them have, um, three and then we've also got some of them with four so mm -hmm. i need to look at how i'm going to separate this so i'm going to give myself a little more space over here
Okay. So a few different approaches for this are, I need to look at, I need to first figure out how to get, how to separate, how to separate these, um, these fields. Um, so there's a few different ways to do this. And one way is, is to look at, let me think about how I'm gonna do this. I don't do it as much. I don't do this type of work in Excel as much anymore. So I'm trying to think, okay, well, I have a way, you know, that I would do this in, in Python, but what, 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 way? Like, how can I translate that to something that is useful here? So I can look at, let me see. So I can look at the text split and I'll refer to this field and I'm going to use, um, I know that you're not trying to trick me, so I'm going to use the semicolon to separate them. So this gives us something to start with. Um, so what I'll do here is, and my approach, by the way, is often I will use kind of an ad hoc way to get the get answers initially. So my approach, and I think this really applies um, to programming in general. So I'll try to first get it right, and then I'll try to make it more efficient. So I want to get these pieces separated, and I want to get the answer. And then, you know, this is something that I, I would go back later. If this is going to be a repeated process, or something that I was going to have to share with other people that, that might be updated in the future, then I would look at how to um, how to make this more programmatic in terms of a solution for this. Much you. So ad hoc versus something that can be repeated. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of the Excel work I do, a lot of the Excel work I do is. Um, it's often ad hoc, you know, projects like this, we're not looking at massive amounts of data. What we're looking at is, is just trying to get the answer from this table that we can actually see within our view. So I'm going to separate this into, I'm going to call this shift one. And I'm going to separate. So this is the first step is I want to essentially separate all the shifts and first want to get an idea of to make sure that I correctly set these set these up. So each one of these, each shift one, and this is going to, I can then copy the formula down to the rest of the rows. So we see this last day on Sunday, there's four people working that day. And we also see here, for example, there's a few other shifts with four. So I then move on and I'm actually going to make this a bit smaller so I can see more of this in the view or alternatively, I'm going to do that. I just, I do want to make sure other people are able to see it too. Yes, yes. So and then this, I'm this going is, to yeah, this is this is some of the stuff that gets missed is you gotta work with your workspace so that you can see mm -hmm. what you see, but also have enough room. So I'm going to call this ship two. And in this case, I'm going to use the same uh text split formula and I'm going to refer to shift two. And don't forget your second parameter. So again, the semicolon. Okay. Right, so. 
you are welcome to use Power BI, Power Query, VBA code, whatever you need. I'm welcome to do that. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Well, let me see. Let me show how to do this. Um, in, I would likely do this. I'm going to, I'm going to show how to do this in Excel and then I'll do that in Power Query. Um, did you want to show my thinking for this? And a spill error. <laughs> um, so this is a problem that, believe it or not, it happens probably a lot more than maybe we'd like to admit, right? When we when I put together, I recently recorded um, a Python and Excel, <laughs> uh, a Python and Excel course. And I, one of the things that I did beforehand was I set up the files so I knew where all the places were going. So I created a spot for the tables and so I and shaded areas so I knew where to put them and how much space they were going to take. Um, but in this case, right, we see that it's it is wants to use this additional column, but I have something there. So what I need to just do is I'm going to add a few more columns, and then again I'm going to copy this down. So we have this we have this split here. Now, I what what I would do is I'm so I've got the split, but then once I want to, um, I actually want to kind of create a consolidated table. So I'm going to show. Can, do you want to see the Power Query solution that I would sure. do for this? Sure. Okay. So I know there's other ways to to do this, but I'm going to copy, copy the data, and then go into. So I'm going to go into Power Query, and there is a way to refer to this in the table, but I'm going to copy it in so they don't end up with um, circular references, if uh, you know, in a in a demo. So I'll then enter the data. Now this is small enough to go, to be copied and pasted in. If you're looking at more than a thousand cells, um, it's not going to fit. So I'm going to essentially what we're doing here is we're recreating this in Power Query. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do here is I know that I'm going to split, I'm going to do a few splits, I'm gonna transform the data a few times. Um, so first of all, and if I go back into the questions, let's see if I can see this on top of, on top of here is, is I know that I'm going to have, I need to get the level of detail down to um, look at the individual people and what essentially what, essentially I want to have a granular view of the data and then I need to summarize it to answer these questions. So I'm going to first um, divide, essentially restructure the data so that I can get it into a table format where then I can, that, can then figure out um, how many, we can then figure out how many hours all these um, the people are working. So to do this, I'm going to get all the shifts into one column. So I'll click on the day field and I'm going to employ my favorite, one of my favorite features in Power Query, which is unpivot other columns. Yes, yes, yes. So now we've got a structure. We've got the, for each shift, we have the day repeating. So now I'm going to focus on this column and I'm going to split this. So I'm going to split the column and this time by a delimiter, um, so my semicolon is the delimiter, and one concern that I have, and I'll show, you know, this is something that I would double check. So it's chosen semicolon for me. So I'm going to click OK. But if I go into this, one issue that I already know pops up because um, I've worked with a lot of CS 
we felt is we have a space to start with. So because so Osprey made this easier to read um, by putting a space between if we go previously, we've got a space between each of the names. And we don't actually want that. So we want to have essentially the delimiter is semicolon and a space. It's not right. just the semicolon. So it's not, it's essentially a special delimiter instead of a comma or a semicolon delimiter. So the good news I can just go back into here and I'm going to update the semicolon to use the semicolon and the oh, space. Okay. Yes. And then it automatically changes the type, but I don't actually know if I want that yet. Um, because what we see here is we've separated everything, but it's not really in a structure that we want to use. So I'm gonna actually take that step off. And instead I'm going to unpivot the table again. And this time, instead of just the day, I'm also going to use the attribute with it. So I'll, control shift or control, um, essentially you can use the control and shift on your arrows to select multiple columns. And then I'm going to, again, unpivot the other columns. This time I'm including the attribute. And I will, before I do that, I'm actually going to rename this. I'm just going to call this, um, uh, we'll call this the shift just to clarify you know, so we have more of a defined label on this. So again, I'll choose these columns and I'm going to unpivot other columns. Now I have these values. So I have the, the day, the shift, the attribute field really doesn't mean much. It just means that, well, it, what it means is that there's, if we look here, we've t we see one, two, three, one, two, three repeated. But then if we go down far enough is that where there are four people, we're going to see, um, we're going to see a value of four. We could keep this in, but I'm going to remove it. And if I need it in the future, I'm going to take it out. I'm going to come back and put it back in. Um, and the nice thing about Power Query is you can delete something, but it's not gone forever. You can just come back and modify the step. So I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to say, let's say the personnel. This gives us a summary of who was, of essentially all the shifts and who is working at each of them. So we have more of this granular data. So I'm just going to rename this data and then load it into Excel. Now I mentioned pivot tables earlier. I'm going to insert a pivot table to see what the summary looks like. And I always put it on a new worksheet um, and label it <laughs> pivot or you know, something more specific, but I, I don't like putting it on the same sheet because you can easily um, accidentally filter the rows. So the question, then going back to our overview here, is we want to see, so notice how we've, how many distinct people. So we can answer a few of these questions by looking at, so we've got personnel are going to go in our rows. And the way we can also, there's a few different ways we can count this. We can put the personnel, and the easiest way to, to do this, even though it's kind of being obvious. So we have, so these are the number of shifts that they work. But what I'm really interested in here is I am interested in, I'm going to look at, essentially I want a distinct count. Right, so so looking at, looking at, we see we have 14 people total. And, and I'll come back as far as getting these answers specifically so we can see the formulas next to their results. So we have the, the shifts that each one of them, that they each have. And what I'm interested in here is, is figuring out which ones are over, um, are over 40 hours for the work week. 
So to do this, I'm going to go back into Power Query. So for each one of these, I'm each so each of this isn't fortunately a trick problem. So for each one of these, I'm going to add the hours. So for each shift that they're working, they're working a total of eight hours. So I'm going to use eight for all of them. Now, notice how this displays as an undefined data type ABC123. Now, I can change it like um, this and click on it, and I can choose a whole number. But I don't like that it adds an extra step. So I normally just put it in like this. So number.type, you can add, when you add a column, you can just add the data type to the end of it. Okay. And why, and that don't you like that, why don't you like that change type step? Well, it's not that I don't like it. It's just I've already changed the type once. So when I add an additional column, I like to put the change type step on it so it keeps it keeps the query steps consolidated. Okay, gotcha. So, so I have the hours here. And so from here, I'm going to say um, I can... So Power Query does this, does, allows us to create pivot tables essentially that are enhanced a bit. We can add more summaries. And unfortunately, we can't necessarily, they're not dynamic like they are when we, once we load the data, but they do enable us to, um, to do some calculations that otherwise, you know, are, I'm not sure if I would do it in a pivot table. I'm not a big fan of adding a column that references a pivot table and it may change in the future. So I like to do it um, this way. So to do this, I'm going to add another query. And it's going to refer to the data. So I know that I have, so for the week, what I'm looking at is the total hours that they're working. Well, let me see if I can see the view. But now this is actually something that a, a challenge with working with Power Query is you, you can't look at the, it's hard to look at the Excel file when you're working in it. So yes. either have to make the notes beforehand or um, you know, see how it works. And then it doesn't save any changes until you load it either. So I want to look at for each of these people. So I'm really interested in the personnel, the number of hours they work. Now we know that they're making $46 an hour, but if they are working overtime, then we need to make sure that we incorporate that as well. So I don't want to put the rate on here yet, I want to get a summary of personnel um, and the number of hours they're working. So when I go into the transform, um, or actually this is on the home step. So the transformation step, it's on the home step. I'm going to use the personnel as my dimension. And then I'm going to hours worked or I'm gonna call this total hours. And what this is going to do is it's going to sum up the hours column. Okay, gotcha. so now we've got the, so now we're looking at, we want to know the total, so we have the total hours that they worked during the week, but next we want to know, so we can tell how many hours, um, who are we looking at the uh, the number of hours for? Mars and Levi. Okay, so I'm going to actually I'll put this in alphabetical order. Um, so we have Mars and I don't see Levi there. Okay. So I guess it's zero. Okay. So for the total hours, and I'm going to put two addition, I'm going to separate, I'm going to add these as two separate um, columns. So 
And this time I'm going to say regular, regular pay. What, but what I want to do here is I want to incorporate the number of hours. Um, I'm going to first determine the number of hours in regular pay time. So I'm going to say if the total hours is over 40, then I'm going to return 40. Otherwise, I'm just going to return the total hours. So what this does is it puts this, it puts a ceiling on the number of hours they can work for regular pay. And then I'm yes. going to come back and adjust this later. So now I can see that some of them that worked 50 hours, they're only working the, the max they can work for regular pay is going to be 40. From here, I I get the total hours that they're working. Now I want to, what I want to do is I want to adjust this formula to say I'm going to multiply all of this. I'm going to make sure that I don't lose any. So 46 is their is their pay otherwise. So we've got up to the number for the number. These are the number of regular hours in the, at their regular hour payment rate. So we mm -hmm. see how much each of them are getting paid. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to again change the, I'm going to add another space here. So you can see that a bit more easily. Add the data type at the end. Okay. So this is the regular pay. And then I want to add another column for the overtime pay. Wow. So in this case, I'm going to say if the total hours is greater than 40, then it's going to be the total hours minus 40 because we already incorporated 40 hours in the previous in the previous calculation. And then otherwise, if it's not over 40, they're not getting overtime pay. So I'm going to return zero. Okay, so Coral's working 32 hours of overtime pay. So, and by the way, I, I'm not sure if I, I should clarify from the previous step. So what I did was I put a formula around this if statement to calculate. So this calculates the total number of hours. And so then I want to multiply it by the pay rate. So previously I multiplied this by 46. And then... Now I want to multiply this by 1.5 because they're getting a special rate for those right. hours that are over 40. So we have um, the max they can make on regular rate is 1840. And then once we include the overtime rate, we're looking at so Coral's made more in overtime um, by working 32, hour, 32 hours of overtime um, over the regular pay. Um, and then this is again, So we have the regular pay and the overtime pay and um, for just in case we need it, um, I'm going to put the total pay in a column that just adds it together. A few different data types, but I've just used this as the number. There's definitely more specific on um, you know a few different the standard programming right. data types. So this gives us a summary. So then does this answer the questions we want to answer? And I'm gonna call this the summary. Okay. And I will, what I will do is I'm just going to put these here as a reference. I wouldn't otherwise leave them. So how many distinct people? Um, we can 
go back into the pivot table and I'll just say, this is something that I sometimes if mix, <laughs> I mix languages up a bit. Um, I think, well, this is available in here. So, um, so the distinct count did not, we did not see that before. It might be just something that I missed. Um, so if I click on, try and get the window open again. Move the count numbers and remove this. Well, actually, what I would do here is I would just swap this out with, um, I would just change the data source. So and there's a few different ways to, to do this. Um, the other the other thing is we can do this with an Excel formula. Um, I'm just, because I've worked, because I've kind of stuck with this approach, I'm just going to use, um, I'm going to refer to, instead of referring to the data, I'm going to refer to the summary. And so we see we have 14 people. And we can also calculate this here. All right, so I, I can calculate, and this is decounts. Um, decounts in this case is going to be, let's go on for this. Oh, the fill criteria, or to say. Right, so I already know that these are, well, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, hang on. But we have, we know that this is 14. What I could do here actually is if I'm not going to change the pivot table again. There's count I could A. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's a few different ways to do it. It just yeah. wasn't, the, the distinct count wasn't, was picking up zero. We know that that's wrong. So how many hours scheduled for leave from Mars? Um, we can say, um, we can either directly refer to um, how many hours scheduled for Mars is going to be 56. Um, and Levi zero, because Levi is not working and the total for the Cavalier total overtime pay. And I should have clarified this earlier is, are we looking at, um, are we looking at the total overtime pay for each of them or for all of them? The total overtime pay. Oh, okay. So one way we can do this, so we just, uh, this is, Okay, so this is our total, and then the regular pay is just going to be something similar. So we have uh, the so we have our total we have this is the regular so this is we calculate the regular pay first right we can do it either way um but typically we'll see like regular pay you know in financial statements before the overtime yep. pay so we've got here's our regular pay and we'll just make this into currency and the um and then we'll just leave these as the whole numbers so there so we can, have you, it. Can, can you go ahead and make the Mars and Levi actual calculations? Um. Yeah. 
So a few ways to do this. Um, I could, I'm just going to, and let's see if I have XLOOKUP on this one. And then the lookup array, personnel, and the return array is this. And, okay. And I can just copy this below. And I'm going to say Levi. So NA, and I can say here that if error or if NA, then I'm going to say zero. So I just use the this, we're just clarifying that in this case, because there isn't a match, we expect to see zero. Yeah. And then yeah. um, so then this is the summary of it. Exactly. That's it. That's it. Beautiful. Beautiful. What do you feel about it? Well, I would probably, you know, thinking about the way that um, I would, the way that I would do this is I might, right, because right now I've pushed everything through into Power Query. So if they change the imports, right, and essentially I've taken the inputs and I've made them fixed. And so what I would do in the future is I would likely look at how those to do those as Excel formulas. Um, but I think I want I wanted to use Power Query because you saw that when I expanded, um, you know, when I split the text by the semicolon delimiter that we all of a sudden ran into space issues. And so I wanted to go to do the approach of um, going through Power Query to get the answers first. And then if I want, and that's kind of, I would say that's a bit of, um, you could go either way, but my approach for it's a power query, it keeps it a bit cleaner as we're splitting it, right? Because we don't have to keep the original step where we're splitting it up or, you know, there, it's going to be more compact and we can modify the steps later. Um, if I were doing this, you know, if this was something that was getting updated constantly, I would look at how to make this more of a process rather than just this is more of an ad hoc way to solve it. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you for doing this. I learned some stuff and I'm sure that the audience learned some stuff. And if not, they just appreciate seeing how somebody else goes through something like this. I think that we, you know, there's, I'd say there's multiple ways to do this. And my approach was just, this was the way that I thought to do it now. And I might have a different idea, you know, if I had more time, I would probably um, look at doing something that I would plan it out a bit more with the with the formulas. But I just found that like, I wanted to get the answer and the power query was going to help me get there. Yes, 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 power query. Got to know power query, folks. Well, <laughs> thanks a lot. And where can people find you online if you want to be found? Um, they can find me mostly on, they can find me on LinkedIn. So follow me on LinkedIn and I have a newsletter that I'm going to start publishing again soon. And I have, um, courses on LinkedIn learning. Learn, and we will share links to all of that. All right. Well, thank you, Helen Wall for doing this and I'll see everybody else another time with another guest and another Excel expert challenge.